sorry. I've been wrong. I've been down to the bottom of every bottle. <clears throat> okay. All right. We are live here on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let's get it now. Okay, here we are. Let's hit record button. Make sure this is recording. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The New Breed. I am your host, Fernando Caro, leader of this group called The New Breed. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. If this is your first episode and your first introduction to IMC Nation, if it's your first introduction to Fernando Caro, if it's your first introduction to The New Breed, a welcome to this group. You know, I've gone through many, many, many changes. And before we get into, you know, this entire storyline uh, that's about to unveil, right? I want to just give a proper introduction to myself because we all live with the delusion that everybody knows us. We live with the idea that everybody knows what we know. We think that people are understanding us. We think that everybody is seeing us the way we see ourselves. And we live a life thinking that everybody else, <laughs> it's funny to think, man, we live a life that <laughs> it's literally, when we say life, we're living a lie. We live in our own delusion. We live in our own creation of our own mind, right? We're all understanding each other to the extent that we understand ourselves. There's a hermetic principle, and the hermetic principle is this. As within, so without. As above, so below. Now, if you've never heard these words, they're very poetic. But if you live these words, then it's a true understanding, a true philosophy that after this call after this lecture after this teaching it's something that you can now gain to measure in your own life because that's all i've been working with for the last several days as above so below as within so without and this is i titled this the art of invincibility and it's one of the codes that i've been able to discover for myself as to when I'm at my best, at my peak performance of life. Now, first and foremost, before we get started, I just want to give a proper shout out to IMC Nation. If you're new to IMC Nation, again, IMC TV is the revolutionary, the, the evolution of, you know, modern day entertainment, modern day television to tell a vision, right? We go to Netflix, we go to Gaia, we go to HBO, we go to our TVs, and we're looking for us to find a vision. We're looking for uh, stories and movies to tell us a vision, their philosophies. If you watch, let's say, growing up, Mickey Mouse, or if you grew up watching superheroes, Mortal Kombat and Marvel and DC, all these characters, all their, their storyline. All it is, is just a fragment of their philosophy, a fragment of what their storyline is. Now, what if I were to tell you that you too have a storyline in your life? You're also telling a story. And when we look at you, when we see the etchings and the markings on your body, the frown on your face, the happiness on your face, when we see the scars on your body, when we see the things that you've gone through, we then get only a glimpse of that hero's journey. Now, just like me, maybe you too, grew up watching and observing and studying superheroes or watching television, or we grew up in that, right? We grew up watching TV and wanting to be these type of characters. They told us a vision. And some of us resonated with different storylines, right? If you grew up, you watch the Hulk, and you're like, man, I feel just like him, right? Sometimes I just want to ah, rage out on the fucking world. 
Or maybe you resonated with like Superman or maybe you resonated with Donald Duck or whatever spoke to you. That's your own unique connection to that, right? Maybe some people like Star Wars. I never was a Star Wars guy, but some people are like massive fanatics of that world. Maybe you were into sports. I was a big sports fan, right? Kobe Bryant was like my idol, man. This guy was like God to me. This guy was like the hero of my life. I was like, bro, I just want to be this fucking guy. This guy is dope, right? And so whatever in your life, especially early, early on, the origins of your life growing up, what was that What was that thing that really moved you? What was that storyline that you could feel it in your core that when you watched it on television, you're like, bro, that's, that's my story. That's, that's me. I want you to just try it for a second. Take a look back in your life and find a moment or some sort of inspiration. What was that thing that you were really into as a child? Was it a sport? Was it cars? I know some guys are hell into cars. I know uh, Damien here works on cars. Maybe that was something, you know, people like love the Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Like that's their calling. Like they're huge fanatics of that. That wasn't me, but maybe that's you. See, you got to find that thing that moves you, the thing that raises your energy inside. Because when you go there, I'm going to tell you right now, there's so much power in the things that make you who you are that you were never told. You see, we grew up thinking that we had to be like them. And when I say them, it's whoever the media was polarizing. That if the media was clapping for, I don't know, uh, Brad Pitt, or if the media was clapping, clapping for Machine Gun Kelly, or wh whatever these so-called uh, heroes of today's world are, these celebrities, these so-called uh, people that we're supposed to look up to, right? The world started to follow these people as influences. And so at some level inside of us, we started trying to be like them even in school and growing up right you wanted to be like the cool person or the you saw the guy that got all the girls or you saw the the girl that got all the guys whatever right there was these models of who we thought we should be and so we lost sight of who we really were we lost sight of the things that moved us the things that made us feel good you see when we started to be like them we lost a part of ourselves we started to want to be validated by being some other version of us that wasn't us. We saw somebody else getting applauded because let's say, for example, right? You grow up in a bad environment and, you know, people are, let's say, uh, there's a guy who's now making a lot of money, but he's doing it unethically, right? He's selling drugs and he's, you know, committing crimes but he's making a lot of people and people are now respecting him. People are validating him. So then you get the young kid, right? He's super into like, you know, Batman's his favorite guy. And then he sees this guy who now the community is praising him because he's making money. And that kid doesn't know. I, I Actually, this is a perfect example. I was watching Mike Tyson. It's called Tyson on Amazon Prime. And Mike Tyson to me is one of those heroes that I look up to. He's just a raw, bad motherfucker, bro. He, he is just, that man is a scary human being, right? I don't think if Mike Tyson at his prime hit any of us, I don't even think we'd be alive, man. Like, just imagine the force that this guy possesses behind a punch, like behind his body, his instrument. Hey, he, he, he's a man just like you, bro. He has two arms and two legs just like you, bro. He has flesh and a heart. He has everything that you have. But what makes him so dangerous? Well, again, we got to look at the philosophy that we started with, the datum, as within, so without. There's something within that being that he possesses that gives him so much gravitational force that manifests on the outside, which is that raw primal animal gonna fucking get whatever i want there's nobody who can destroy me i'm gonna fuck you up and that's literally what all his opponents felt and so 
he was talking about a story in his grow, you know, in his in his adolescence, you know, growing up from the hood, wherever he was from. And he talks about there was, you know, he started to see these guys in the hood who were making a lot of money. And they were doing, he said, this is a story. He's like, there's these guys who were dressing in like nice fur coats and, and, you know, nice shoes. And they had watches and cars and they had gold. And he started to look at these guys and be like, damn, who are these guys? These guys are doing it. You know, these guys look sick. But what he didn't know about these guys that he was looking up to was that they were gangsters, that they were killing people, they were selling drugs. And he didn't know that. But he saw the outside layer and he's like, well, I want to be like them because that's the that's the model of success. And then that led to a path of him, you know, being incarcerated, uh, you know, going in and out of juvenile halls. And, you know, his life was going on a down, down world spiral. And that's a storyline for so many people. They saw the person that was getting the attention. They saw the person who was getting the praise and they thought, hey. What if I just started to be like these people? Maybe finally I'll get noticed in my life. So they did that thing that was forbidden. They did that thing that compromised their own values. They they sold themselves for the money. They sold themselves for the illusion of receiving some sort of gain or attention. And that's all we see these days now. You go on Instagram, you just see a bunch of people selling themselves for attention you see women promoting you know their bodies and selling their bodies for attention you see men selling their values and their ethics and their integrity for attention and so much of the world is consumed by that people start to lose their essence and their purity and their innocence and their their gifts and their qualities because again What's being praised in the world isn't necessarily what's good for the world. And that's when we know something's very wrong in in society. When the things that are being praised are being higher valued than the truth of what actually improves humanity. The world would rather be entertained than informed and educated. And that's the truth. That's why the entertainment world makes millions and billions of dollars versus the world of truth and education and wisdom because that world right there why do they want us to buy into their entertainment why is it that a professional athlete someone who throws a fucking football makes half a million or half a billion dollars a year or in 10 years you tell me right now what human being needs to make 500 million dollars to throw a football and play a game a game, a sport game, the same game that you and I played growing up for, for fun. Well, he's a professional athlete and he dedicates. I understand that. I understand that they dedicated their whole lives. I understand that they're gifted. I understand that they're talented. But you tell me what human being needs $500 million to throw a football when there's actual beings who are saving lives. Tell me why the 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 doctor, the surgeon who's about to save someone's life isn't getting paid that much. Tell me why the paramedic who is, you know, saving lives each and every day, not getting paid that much. Why is it that the people in positions of actual value to societies, the firemen, the the policemen, hey, bro, it's not easy being a policeman. Oh, fuck the cops and they're crooked. And bro, how about you go be a policeman? And go see from their eyes what they have to deal with, knowing that at 24 hours a day, they, they, they are a target. 24 hours a day, they have to go out with their shoulders, looking side to side to see if someone's going to kill them or shoot them. Why? Because they're a target now. Or be a soldier at war, not knowing if they're going to come back home. But you're telling me a man with football or basketball or golf or a sporting, you know, is worth all that money? Why? Because what does it tell us? That entertainment, that's the entertainment business. That's the business where a lot of money is generated. A lot of investment is put into this instead of the truth speakers, the philosophers, the, the wisdom, the healers of the world, right? 
the ones that push forth humanity and give life and light to other beings. You see, by speaking, you're not going to be the most popular. The minute you speak, you have to understand that the opposite effect might come out too. Meaning, the minute you start to speak your philosophy and start to express yourself to the world, you have to understand that not everybody's going to agree with you. You have to understand that the opposite comes with it too. You've now opened yourself up to the world by sharing your thoughts and your ideas. Now be ready and prepared that regardless of the situation, you're, it's going to come with the good and the bad. You're going to come with the friends and the foes. Now, until you're at a place where you're okay with that, say, bring me what's for me. If by me speaking and expressing what's within me and sharing it out, is going to manifest in friends and foes, I'm good with that. Why? Because at the end of the day, I do not want to be a man who dies with his voice stuck inside. I don't want to be another human being who cannot express themselves because everywhere I go, I see a bunch of unexpressed human beings. I see a bunch of people who were never, ever able to share what's deeply inside of them, their deepest desires of life. I see a bunch of people with false dreams and false hopes giving up on whatever ambitions and visions that they had for themselves. They just settled. They settled for life. They settled for mediocrity. They settled for, you know, what is. When there's a whole world that's available inside when you tap in. Now, I'm not saying you have to go seek out the entire world. I'm saying the whole world's inside of you, man. That when you find you, the whole world will seek you for what you have inside. You are the whole world. You are a manifestation of whatever here is. Meaning, right, let's say you go to the Grand Canyon or you go to, uh, let's look at um, the Himalayas, right? Or you go to any of these beautiful places that a lot of visitors travel the entire world to go see. You too, as a human being, are that exact gift. That whatever created the Himalayas, whatever created the beaches of Hawaii, whatever created the sunsets uh, of, you know, ancient Egypt, or whatever created these mystical, magical places, also created you. Now, inside of you sits a world of potentials, a world of infinite uh, creation. Now, it's your job to find and to excavate whatever's inside of you. So many layers of you are deep inside. One second. So how do we find that? How do we find that it, that value inside of us? Now, this is the art of invincibility, right? This is what I titled it. This is where you're going to find your invincibility. This is where you're going to find your source of energy, your source of power, is by just trying this practice. And the practice is this. If you look inside of yourself at the earliest image of your life, the earliest memory that you have of you, What's a memory that you have of you that just makes you feel so good inside? It could be anything. It could be an image of your mom, or dad, uh, a place they used, to, they used to take you. It could be a sporting event. It could be a television show. It could be anything. What's that image that just uh, makes you feel so good inside? What's that feeling that just makes you feel like, damn, whoo, like, man, if I just did that again, I felt so alive when I did that. It could be you snowboarding boxing, that moment where you just have a, a surplus of energy inside. If you can pull anything right now, your earliest memories or your most recent memories, get an image of that. That feeling that makes you feel so good inside raises your shakti, it raises your vibration. Now, once you have that, once you have that image, it could be an image, it could be a memory, it could be anything, right? Once you have that, Feel what it feels like. There's going to be certain feelings. Like for me, when I, let's say, think about my earliest memories, I, I think about, I see an image of Kobe Bryant. Because I spent so much time just studying this guy. You have no idea. 
And this moment of when he wins the championship and he starts jumping up on the podium and screaming and it's a celebration. Oh, man, the awe I feel. I feel in awe watching that. I'm emotional. I, I feel like I sacrificed so much just watching this man succeed and win and just the excitement, the tears, the relief, that, that sense of it's accomplished. We're done. We made it. We got the result. Fuck yeah, let's go. This is why we work so motherfucking hard. This is why I show up every day. This is why I do what I do. This is why I say, and once I commit, I say I'm going to do it. I go do it all the way in. There is no plan B. This is my only plan. And I'm going to work every fucking day until I get the result. Why? Because the result is inevitable. The result is going to happen. At some point, I don't know when it happens, but at some point it's going to happen. If I keep working, the result of the money that I'm seeking, it's going to happen. If I just keep doing the work each and every day, that result of the money that I'm seeking is going to happen. If every day I'm pouring out value to the world, that result that I'm seeking is going to find me. It's like the saying goes, whatever you're seeking, hey, my friend, is seeking you too. It's seeking you. It's seeking you. But you have to be able to speak from that source of you that you're seeking. So, for example, if I'm seeking, let's say, again, the, the art of invincibility. If I want to feel invincible, what does that feel like, Fernando? What does invincibility feel like? It means there is no limit. Whatever fucking limit that my mind was putting on it, there absolutely is no limit. I ask myself, how do you want to look, bro? Do you want to die not being able to see your body look like a perfect Greek god? Then if there was going to be a statue of you, how would you want to look on a statue? Would you want a fucking muffin top? Would you want bitch tits and bitch hips? Or would you want a chiseled out, chiseled out body like a man who would go to war each and every day? Hey, man, I want that one. Okay, then, bro. There is no limit. What are you doing today in order that's going to result into that manifestation? Well, I'm going to the gym. I'm doing my boxing. I'm doing my yoga. I'm eating right. Okay, bro. Just keep doing that. Because by doing that, you're going to get that result. If it takes you one year, five years, 10 years, it's not about getting there. It's about doing the things every day. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. And as long as I keep myself in that space, in that mind frame, in that mindscape of knowing that the result is there, I know that it's part of the journey. It's part of the process. But I can feel invincible. The art of invincibility also is, is like, hey, bro, whatever obstacles show up in your life, hey, man, I'm still fucking alive, dude. Those difficult times in my life that I didn't think I was going to get out of. Those crazy moments that I was afraid, the moments where, I, I, man, I just looked up and I prayed and I prayed all night and I prayed every day. And I just said, hey, man, if you're listening to me, if you're listening to me, whatever is listening to me, please just make sure I'm OK. Just please, please. I, I just beg you that I'm OK. Hey, man, you're OK. You're still here. And if you're still fighting and you're still asking, you're still hoping and to receive. Hey, bro, I tell you what. Just keep asking, keep praying, keep doing it. Why? Because you're bound to get the result. If you're doing the tasks each and every day, you're bound to get the result, man. I have yet to see it. It took me 11 months. Look, I, I 11 months ago, I started a, real, a, a project, a, a new business, which is a real estate investing business. It took me 11 months to finally see traction. 11 months of calling people, 11 months of studying, 11 months of uh, going to events, 11 months of, you know, continuous rejection, 11 months of learning a process, of learning a language, of learning a business, 11 months to finally get some result. Now, after 11 months, the results have been so abundant, so immense and so much. It's been so much. And that's one thing I know for certain is that the minute I know what result I want, it's going to happen. I don't know how long it's going to take. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes a shorter time. 
But as long as you're doing the task each and every day of the thing that you want, you're going to get the result, bro. Just don't stop. That's the problem with everybody. They stop at some point. They give up. They, it gets too much. They quit. There's this meme. Uh, and I don't remember what it says, but it's pretty much a guy. He's like gold mining. And at the end of it, it's like a bunch of diamonds. And one guy, he's like right there, like an inch away. And then he turns back and he says, like, I'm never going to get the result. And he walks away. And the other one has the guy and he's still going and going and going. And he ends up getting the result. He ends up getting all the diamonds. You don't know how far away you are from that thing that you want. You might just be a little bit more, a little, a little bit more work. I tell you this. There's some metaphysical, some meta, metaphysics that take place in manifestation, or let's give a better word, in achieving some sort of result, right? And it takes time. I don't know if time means like a, a year or two years. It just takes a moment of a, like, for example, bro, if every day you work out, and every day you're doing your, your, your process, every day you're, you're eating right, every day you're, you're continuously pouring into your body. At some point, your body's going to form. At some point, it's going to change. Another example would be in yoga. Yoga uses a lot of your spine. The more mobile your spine is, the more you can stretch into your postures. Once you start to remove some of the tension or not, look, I'm going to fix my language. Once you start to remove your tension, you don't remove your tension. Tension removes itself. I'm not doing shit. I'm just doing the posture. Some days I can barely touch my toes. Other days I can put my whole palms on the ground. How that happens, I don't know. My job is to just show up to the yoga studio. Some days... I can do an entire back bend. Some days I can just barely go up here. At some point, as time goes forward, there's going to be a moment in time where ooh, you hit that posture all the way. At some point, you're doing so much business. You meet that one connection, then boom, you get the result. You meet that one client that just changes your entire business structure. It changes your entire uh, financial situation. You're just one moment away, one communication, a line away, one understanding away from unlocking whatever door was closed before. You remove the door, you get the key and you open it and now you have access. So, so much of it is removing, excavating layers of ourselves that are not us. So that when we can get to the truth of ourselves, when we can get to the core of ourselves. Now, for me, I like the feeling of feeling invincible. I like the feeling of feeling like there's no limits. I like the feeling of knowing anything is possible. I like the feeling that there's nothing forbidden in this planet for me. There's nothing that cannot be granted to me. There's everything is possible. Everything is a potential. Everything is within my means, within my grasp, as long as I want it. Now, when you start to take ownership for the things that you want, not the things that you need, the things that you want, and you take full ownership for wanting to, now let the universe decide if it's for you or not. If you want it bad enough, if you, you really want it, hey, man, I tell you what, the, the world will do leaps and bounds for you to get it. It just happens that way. I remember I wanted a loan. I needed $25,000 because I really wanted to do uh, a, an investment, a course, right? And my teacher, I wanted to do a $25,000 mentorship course. At that time, I didn't have $25,000. This was about four years ago. However, I wanted the teachings. I wanted that money so that I can invest it, so that I could learn and evolve and grow. And I, every day I just kept asking, like, wow, where am I going to get the money? Who has that money? Who, what bank? What credit card? Who do I need to talk to in order to get the $25,000 so that I can do the thing that I want? And long and before, hold, as I started to speak to everybody and say, hey, how can I get $25,000? I was telling everybody. And it started leading, leading doors, opening doors. And before you know it, the doors were open. 
I started to ask the question and the universe started to present the answers. And I got the money in a month. I got the 25K that I was seeking. I got the investment that I needed. But that only happened when I started to ask. Like, for example, if I ask you today, man, if one of your loved ones, someone that you really love, it could be a family member, a loved one, whoever, and they needed your help, and they say, hey, man, I need $10,000 because I'm about to die and I need this medication. Is there any way you can help me? I guarantee in that moment, you're going to do everything and anything within your means to go find that $10,000. You'll go speak to whoever you got. You'll go shake the hands with the fucking devil. Because you're going to go do it because you love that person. And you're going to go do whatever the fuck you need to go do. Now, when the motivation or the inspiration is big enough, you'll go do anything to go get it. You'll go, you'll go do anything to go get it. Maybe not compromise your values, but because I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> if they said, hey, bro, you got to go uh, suck some dick to go fucking get the money. I'm not going to do that, bro. Right? So, like, at the end of the day, you got to have your boundaries. But at the same time, yeah, exactly. Bang. But at the same time, you got to allow the doors to open up because they're all there. So, again, by asking the question and knowing what it is that you want to accomplish, the door is going to open. Maybe you're seeking a new job or you're seeking a new relationship or you don't like the relationship you're in. Like, man, just show me a door. Like, show me how I can exit this thing. Fuck. I'm draining energy each and every day I'm here. Show me the answers. Believe me, the answers are going to show up. Now, your job each and every day is to keep doing your work so that you're ready when the opportunity shows up. Opportunities are everywhere. The question is, are you ready for them? Are you ready right now for your whole world to change, your whole universe to shift? Are you ready that if right now uh, life required you to be a completely new being so that you can receive all the things you want? Are you ready? Are you ready for your whole life to just shift right before your eyes? Because I'm telling you, it does. It works that way. It can. I live like that, bro. My, my universe shifts immediately the minute a decision is made. So to recap, this was titled The Art of Invincibility. This is for you, again, to find what makes you feel invincible. What makes you feel, what drives you? What's that driving force inside? What's that thing that you just want to get so fucking bad, man, that if you were, let's say, bullied your whole life and people told you you weren't good enough and they said you never make it and inside of you, you're like, fuck you, I'm going to make it. Fuck you, I'm going to have everything I've ever wanted. I wasn't good enough for you, but I'm good enough for me. Matter of fact, I'm so fucking great. I'm going to show you how great I am. Not for you, but for me. Why? Because you were just part of the universe saying, again, another pattern of what it's told me before. That I wasn't this, that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't that. It's all good. I've heard it before. Don't worry about it. You're not the first person to tell me that I'm not that. I've been told I'm not good enough my entire life. And what have I done my entire life? Prove them that I'm fucking more than enough. Matter of fact, I'm overqualified for you, actually. Matter of fact, I'm way too good enough for you that it's not going to work out. Now, maybe I sound egotistical. Maybe I sound like I'm ignorant. Good. Good. I like that about me, actually. Because I would rather believe that I'm more than enough than to think that I'm less because you have some sort of opinion or judgment because I'm not good enough for you. Who the fuck are you? You're not God. Hey. My God says I'm good enough. Why? Because I wouldn't be alive if I wasn't good enough. My purpose would be done and completed if I wasn't here. But for the fact that I'm still alive, that means I still have purpose. For the fact that I still have breath, that means I still have something to achieve. For the fact that I'm still here means that I still have a lot to give. And while I'm here, walking this planet in good health and in good spirit, then matter of fact, I'm actually going to give so much of me each and every day because I'm here. And while I'm here, I'm going to continue to pour myself out into the world because that's all I am, man. 
I'm just a messenger of who I am and where I come from. I don't know where I am, where I come from. And that's my mission. I don't know. Uh, maybe the world tells me. Maybe I find out later. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, man, you have to reclaim your life. You have to reclaim your wants, your 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 wishes, your vision for your life. What is your vision, bro? Is it what it looks like right now? The things that you see in your daily living? Is that your vision? Or is that just the life you're living? Because that's what it is. And if that is, if you're in a good place and you're like, hey, I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm I, like, I wouldn't change one thing about how I'm living. I wouldn't change where I would live. I wouldn't change my environment. I love exactly what I do. Then there you go, bro. You achieve what you want. Congratulations. Like I literally want exactly what I have right now. Like I, I'm, ha I'm living inside of my wants. I'm living inside of the things that I wanted. I wanted to live here. I wanted to live this life. I wanted to be this guy that I'm being. I want. I wanted to speak and teach. I wanted to share my ideas. I wanted to sound like this and look like this. Now, there's still more layers of it, of course, and I'm continuing to refine myself in my process. But at some point, at some level, I wanted to be this guy that I'm being today. And I know that you have to look at your life and say, fuck, man, I wanted this guy more than anything else. Look how far I've come. Hey, Neil, I saw a picture of you. You look fucking great, man. You look great, bro. And I know you wanted that really bad. And you wanted to learn boxing too. And you wanted that really fucking bad. You're living in your wants, bro. You're living in your vision. Keep going because I know that there's more layers to it. I know you want to look. Yeah, exactly. I know there's levels to it. There's levels to this shit. So as long as you know that you're on your path, on your purpose, you're around the people that you want, you have to look at the people around you. Hey, do these people want me? They don't want me. I don't want you. I want what's for me. That's it. Whatever is for me, God, universe, if you're listening to me, I want whatever is for me. If it's for me, pour me, pour me, immerse myself with it. Shower me with the things that want me. But if it doesn't want me, hey, I don't need it. I'm fulfilled. I'm good. I don't need anything outside of right here, what I have, me. Anything else is bonus. If I have a good friend, wow, I'll cherish it with the greatest, like it's the greatest gift. If I have a good conversation, well, thank you for the attention and the exchange of energy. If I have people who listen to me, man, thank you. Those are all bonuses. That's all exterior. As within, so without. Meaning if inside of you, you're good, you're fulfilled, you're, you're in a good place, you feel strong, you know the things that you want, hey man, that's it. You're, you're, you're good to go. I'm telling you, it's not the money that's going to change you. It's not the, the car. It's not the, it's none of that shit, bro. All that stuff is bonus. If it comes, it comes. And if it doesn't, it's all right. First, make sure that you're good with you. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to be wrapping it up, guys. So if there are any questions, feel free to ask now or forever we hold our peace until the next new breed call. Uh, but that's the art of invincibility in several words. It's more so a vibe, a frequency that I share. It's more so uh, my inner state of how I create, right? Like each day, I just immerse myself in activities that make me feel invincible, make me feel alive. I do things that I enjoy. I do the things that I want to do. I don't do anything in my day that I don't want to do. I don't work a job I don't want to work. I don't talk to people I don't want to talk to. I don't uh, interact in a world that I don't want to interact with. I eat the foods that I want. I talk to the people that I want. I build friendships with the people I want. I have businesses with the people I want. I go to places that I want. I do the things that I want, man. What a great life. What a great life to live that. And over time, it changes. And that's okay. You evolve. You get better. You grow. Go with the cycle. All right. Any comments, remarks? I see Phoenix. Go ahead, brother. Us. Us. Thank, you. Thank you very much for your inspiring talk, by the way. Yeah. Um, this is more question for you to relay to the audience okay. and how you would um, 
get yourself back into flow state, essentially. So if something happened that was going to ruin that day, and we, we all want a good day, what, what would you do to flip it back, flip that script? Perfect. For the so as, as Phoenix mentions here is flow state, exactly what I'm speaking. So let's say, for example, if today my practice is, hey, man, I just want to feel invincible. Anything that deviates me away from invincibility, let's say I get bad news from the exterior world, right? A loved one of mine is dying. Well, let me ask myself, there's going to be several emotions that come up, of course, right? But how in this moment, in it, when I face a dark place in life, something from the outside that can take me away from, as he said, flow state, if my flow state is feeling invincible, how can I approach this moment with invincibility? Okay. If I just take a, a, an image right now in my mind, someone I love and care about is passing away. There's nothing I can do about it because that's part of life. Life and death come together. I understand that. There's a lot of emotions that I feel when I think about the being because just the memories that come up, the thought of are they hurting? Are they suffering? Are they in pain? Those things hurt. Oh, man. They may... In that moment, I think the greatest gift that I could give this being as they're passing is knowing that me inside of me, hey, I know that you're going through some pain right now. I know that you're hurting right now. And I'm going to send you this feeling that I have inside of me. Whether you receive it into your next life or not, I'm going to send you this good feeling. I'm not going to take the bad feelings. I'm going to feel them inside. It's going to hurt. It's going <sighs> to. There. So what I did right now was this. As I'm talking to you guys about invincibility, all I did was just in that moment, I sent it, this is how I, I use my imagination. I just sent, if let's say I imagine golden, golden light, like golden or like a golden like, like dust, like a golden aura, a shower of gold. It would almost be like if you're like a Super Saiyan and Dragon Ball Z and like the gold electricity comes out. It's like a golden aura coming out of my system and going into that loved one. And as I know that they're passing, I'm sending that in that that into them. Now, how does that keep me in my flow state? Well, in that moment, I now take control of what's inside my system. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be pain. There's going to be hurt. But in that moment, I know that this being here, whoever's passing, I know that they would want me to be strong. I know that they would want me to be invincible. I know that they would want me to do, continue to do what I'm doing. And so in that moment, I have no other choice but to be even more invincible, to be even more strong, to be even more giving, to be even more loving, to be even more. So it would actually amplify all those other qualities, knowing that the person that I love who's passing or whatever image, or let's say another example, someone's talking shit about you and hating you. And, and you're going to get upset. You're like, oh, man, fuck this piece of shit. Who the fuck do they think they are talking shit about me? Like, fuck you, you piece of shit. You know me and you're talking shit? You fucking asshole. In that moment, <clears throat> if I catch or if you catch yourself, you're like, oh, man, I'm getting riled up because of this fucking piece of shit. Okay. How, how am I going to stay in my flow state? How am I going to stay in my invincibility, my shield, my force field? I take a look inside and say, let me look. This guy's actually affecting me with his words. I know this person, man. Why would he say something like that? Ugh, what the fuck, man? You, you asshole, bro. You asshole, man. What did I do to you, bro? You have some sort of judgment? Oh, you piece of shit. Okay. 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 That's my response. That's my response. Nessie. Okay. If that's how he feels, that's fine. Okay. Well, let me show you now. And again, this is something that I have. It's like a quality. It's like not necessarily I want to prove people wrong. I want to prove myself right. And if someone's making me feel wrong, if someone's making me feel like their, their words are threatening me because I'm doing something wrong. In that moment, I'm going to prove to myself that I'm right. And it's not for them. It's for me. So in that moment, I could see where the hate and the attack is coming. Okay, now this is going to move me to go do some more shit. Meaning, do more of the things that I'm doing. 
So like in that moment, I would now have energy to go do a workout. I guarantee in that moment, when I go to the boxing gym, I'm going to be even sharper and better. Like, bang, 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 right? We're at the gym. We're going to push more. Why? Because there's some energy inside of me. Why? Because I got to prove me right. Is this guy right about me being a piece of shit that I'm lying and I'm doing this and I'm not showing up? No, hell no. I uh, watch, watch, bro. Thank you, actually. Thank you for that wake up call. Thank you for for sharing those words. I needed that, actually. I needed to hear somebody from that side. Why? Because I was getting in my head. I was feeling too good, man. I thought everything was sunshine and rainbows. I needed to hear that there's still an opposition. I needed to hear that there's still people doubting. I needed something so that I can remind myself, hey, bro, there's still another level. Let's go. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there's different, I guess, alchemy. There's different ways to like use that energy. But at the end of the day, all I focus on is my wants. I can't change what the outside world's going to give. It's going to... There's a stoic philosophy. It says, forgot who said it, but he says something like, I'm paraphrasing now. It says, oh, it's Epictetus. He says, approach each and every day. These are my words, but it's the message is this. Approach each and every day, knowing that people are going to misbehave today. Like just go out to the world already knowing that people are going to misbehave today. That could mean the people around you are going to have a bad day. That could mean the people in society might be crazy. Just know that people today are going to face some dark shit today. Just know that. Just go into the day not expecting that people are going to be praising you and bowing to you. No. Expect that all the things might go wrong today. Okay? So that you have that I a reality in your mind that hey there actually is real problems that people are facing okay good all right now i know that i'm about to face a world that aberration and problems and doubts and adversities and a bunch of shit is happening okay cool now as i go through my day i have that knowing that understanding that people are going through things today so how am i going to make life better how am i going to speak into life that life grows and continues and evolves. Now, I'm not here to solve everybody's problem. I'm here to express what's inside of me. Now, if inside of me furthers humanity, if inside of me makes humanity better, if inside of me helps humanity grow and evolve because I'm growing and evolving, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm leveling up because my life is an example of humanity, I am humanity, then by me changing me, the world changes. It's not me going and changing the world. It's me changing me so that the world grows, the world gets better. And so today I'm just going to emulate being the perfect citizen of the universe. Today, I'm just going to practice being the best example of what a man should be in life. Today, I'm going to practice being the perfect example of what God's child would be like. God's creation. How can I be the perfect creation for God today? Okay, well, God would probably want me to make decisions that are going to improve my survival, improve the survival around my loved ones, improve my conditions. God would want me to be on my shit today, huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And maybe God wants me to rest because I'm tired and this and that. Hey, I'll rest, God. Thank you. And I just have this inner relation with my God. So I don't know if that answered your question, but there's there's just different philosophies that are inside me. And as you live a life that you're living for your values and your values are good values because you're a good human being, then there's no need for apology. There's no need for apology for your survival. There's no need for apology for your values. There's no need for apology for what you want in this life because what you want is very valid, actually. Unless it, look, if it takes away from another human being, if it takes away from other people's happiness and survival, if it takes away from, from life, then it's probably not a good value. But if it does nothing to take away from another individual and it's what you want because it makes you happy, then bro, go do what you want, man. Do what you want. Because so much of our lives, they told us we can't have this, we can't have that, we can't do this, we can't do that. And they wanted to control each and every way we went. Don't study this because then you're that. Hey, bro, if it doesn't harm you, 
and it makes me happy, <laughs> then it has nothing to do with you. And that's it. It has everything to do with me. Why? Because I only have one of these lives. And this is my life. And I'm going to own my life because this is my life. Okay. Cool. So any last, any last closing statements? If not, then we'll wrap this up and we'll save it for the next one. The next new breed call. All right, everybody. Well, it's good to see you guys. I'll see you guys.